Up next, uh, and, and just, just a word as you begin to look at all these different systems, so the person on a bike, the person on a bus, if you're a driver, you might say if somebody doesn't want to use those systems, what's in it for me? Well, the person on the bike, the person on the bus, the person on the train means that there's one more car that isn't on the road. So those are the, the payoffs, I think, for everybody as we talk about these things. Uh, up next is Eli Cooper, the Transportation Programs Manager of the City of Ann Arbor, and Eli has worked uh, in different states and different cities, and I think is one of the best people in the state at being able to bring all these different modes of non-traditional transportation together. Okay, let's see if I can work the technology. That's a good first start. Uh, good evening. Uh, the uh, subject that I'm going to focus on this evening is the city's non-motorized transportation plan review. It was in 2007 when the city council adopted its first non-motorized transportation plan. Prior to that, we had a series of bicycle plans, but as we entered into the 21st century, we began to look at sustainable transportation, looking beyond just bicycles, but including uh, walking as well. The, uh, the, high, the highest level, the vision, what does the community want? How are we going to uh, position ourselves in order to achieve a sustainable, non-motorized uh, transportation network and a community? And the vision is to create both a physical environment and a culture. So it's more than just putting lines on the street, but it's creating an environment and a culture. So both the place and the people resonate or can relate to the non-motorized transportation system. As you can see, there were uh, uh, goals that aspired to align with that vision. And what I'm going to share with you is a quick overview of five or six years worth of progress uh, and the dramatic changes that we've begun to see. Uh, I'm going to organize the uh, information I'm going to present to you both by uh, outlining the advances that we've made, the progress, highlight some of the challenges that we've experienced over the five years and we've framed for the purpose of the plan review process and then quickly touch on some new concepts and recommendation. Uh, just before I go into the detail of the presentation, for those of you in the, in the audience, it's important to note that Tuesday the City Planning Commission released the document or recommended the release of the document for public review. So as much as a lot of this information seems like it's uh, really firm, what we're going to be looking for is feedback, critical input from the community over the next uh, month and a half or so, and we'll take those comments and include them into a revised draft that at that time will go forward to back to the Commission and Council for adoption as the plan update. Uh, for those of you uh, audience members at home, uh, we're probably looking at the May to June time frame. So if you're looking at this uh, and we're still in the month of May or early June, it might still be time to get in touch with staff and give us your input on the information that we're talking about here uh, this evening. A uh, quick reminder, uh, the non-motorized plan, if you can see uh, there's uh, a lot of color in terms of the different areas of the city, but the roadways are colored red, and those red uh, lines indicate areas where the plan recommends on-road bicycle lanes. Uh, I can say that this is the near-term plan. Uh, the, in the five years where uh, our target was to achieve uh, this level of investment, uh, what the plan looked about into the future beyond that is that every major arterial road, every roadway that you probably use to get to or from work, into the downtown, out to a commercial center uh, in some of the neighborhoods, uh, should have bicycle facilities right on the road. Uh, over the past five years, uh, we've added uh, about 20 miles of additional bike lanes. Uh, they're shared roads. Uh, some of the roadways just weren't wide enough to put a, a discrete bike lane, uh, but we were able to put signage and pavement markings to uh, inform bicyclists that they're welcome and to advise motorists that they should expect and respect bicyclists who have the legal right to share that road. Uh, we also, uh, as I mentioned, it's a non-motorized plan. Uh, there are elements in the document that speak to the pedestrian realm. Uh, sidewalk gaps along the side of the road, crossing islands, uh, and other features that I'll uh, elaborate a little more as I go through the presentation. Uh, the question that you might ask, the simple question, you've made these investments, is it having an effect? And the simple answer is absolutely. 
I know when I was in uh, the city in 2005, 2006, yeah, it, it was clear that this was a bicycle-friendly community. But I suspect that each of you, as you've uh, walked around the city over the past year or two, can't help but notice that everywhere you go all the time, you'll see uh, a number of cyclists uh, using uh, their legs and their energy to move themselves to meet their needs. So I think we're really seeing, and the statistics bear that out, 46% increase in the percent of bicyclists uh, that are using their bicycle to get to work in a very short period of time. Uh, what was that old movie, If You Build It, They Will Come? Uh, with respect to bicycle facilities, it held true in Portland, it holds true in Ann Arbor. We're building it, and I, as I look at the audience, I suspect many of you are using it, but also many others are out there as well. Erica's bike share program, I think, will help expand the reach of bicycling to even uh, more folks in the community. And I know, uh, looking at what Nathan presented and working with him on that, this is a citywide plan that I'm speaking to, but this is a regional imperative. And the Washtenaw Carter and the partners in that are all helping to make investments to build on uh, the fine start that we've taken here in Ann Arbor. Uh, what does it look like? Uh, obviously, the trend is upwards. Uh, close to 40 miles of bike lanes, uh, or 40 miles of our roads have bike lanes. We're close to 80 miles, because uh, some streets are one way, so you only have a bike lane on one side. But close to 80 miles of bike lanes in the city, and uh, very welcoming when uh, we resurface a road and we add the bike lanes, it's fresh pavement, fresh pavement marking, and it's a smooth ride for cyclists. This map illustrates the connectivity that we're beginning to see uh, within the city. Uh, for those of you who are sitting in the front, you can see the scattered green lines uh, that were not connected. So that back in 2007, we had a nascent system of about 18 or 19 miles of bicycle lanes. Now with close to 40 um, lane miles plus the shared roads and shared path, uh, you can get into the downtown from almost one, any of the major radial arterials, and we're working at extending that system further to the edges of the city to connect with our neighbors and to connect into uh, the neighborhoods. What's a shared use path? Shared use path is a, um, it's, it's in the area of a sidewalk, if you will. Uh, the width is greater. Sidewalks generally four or five feet. Shared use path is eight feet wide or wider. So if you look at the path on Euron Parkway, that would be considered a shared use path. The new facility that was just uh, constructed on Washington Avenue, uh, that's 10 foot wide, that's a shared use path. Uh, some of the paths uh, that comprise the border to border trail that run along the railroad corridor through Gallup Park, those are also uh, shown uh, in that purple color as shared use paths. Progress seems simple. Uh, I love saying signs, lines, and, and symbols, and what you can see is a variety of them. What you can't see is the complexity. Uh, I've learned to make a lot of new friends with traffic engineers who have things like the MMUTCD and AASHTO uh, that create the standards and specifications of how you need to create a sign, where it can sit, and what it can say. Uh, so uh, uh, the, the interesting piece is we've gotten a lot smarter, but over the five years we've installed over 500 new signs. And again, to me that advertises or communicates to cyclists that they're welcome into the community that this is a place where cyclists are valued. Pedestrian treatments, uh, again, non-motorized, so we're looking at the pedestrian realm as well. Uh, interesting that the sidewalk system is uh, fairly well complete. Now, I know there are many gaps in this city. There were 75 outlined in the plan at its adoption. But the bigger issue is helping people get across the street. And so what we've seen is deployment of innovative technology, something called a hawk beacon, which is shown on the lower right. And it, uh, it's a overhead signal that has just two colors, red and yellow. Uh, it stays dark unless a pedestrian wants to cross the street. Pedestrian touches the actuation button, the signal actually wakes up, starts flashing yellow, and then a double red bulb. This is right out uh, on Euron, right behind the YMCA, and it's a very effective means to uh, help people uh, get across the street, either to the Y or there's a senior tower across the street, access to West Park, uh, very effective but uh, somewhat costly. Uh, on the lower uh, left, you see uh, what's described as a flashing beacon 
Uh, it's a rectangular device, and you've uh, probably seen those. Uh, perhaps on East Stadium, we've just installed a couple. Plymouth Road, uh, similar concept. The pedestrian wants to cross the street, pushes the button, uh, but instead of a red light, we get a series of flashing yellow strobes, and what that does is it advises drivers that a pedestrian wants to get across the street. Uh, this map shows uh, the areas that I described, uh, East Stadium, Plymouth, uh, Washington and 7th, areas where we've made uh, pedestrian improvements over the past uh, few years. Sidewalk gaps, uh, we will have more uh, to show in the future. This is an area that has proven to be a challenge. Uh, what you see here are some sections of new sidewalk. The plan included 75 to 80 identified gaps. We filled a handful. Uh, we're looking for uh, additional and innovative funding sources in order to uh, make further progress in filling our sidewalk gaps. Uh, in the non-motorized transportation realm, we can't just provide facilities if we're going to change culture. We need to provide education, information, and encouragement. Uh, these are a couple of examples of some materials that we've produced over uh, the planning period. At the table in the back is one that MDOT recently produced and we reprinted. Uh, it talks about, for motorists, how to drive around bicycle lanes. It will answer all those questions that uh, you were thinking. Am I allowed to pull into that bike lane? Is a bicycle riding alongside of me? What do I do? Um, enforcement is an important ingredient, again, in creating the culture. Enforcement is not a physical environment issue, but it's creating that mindset for motorists that they need to respect uh, the rights of pedestrians as they walk across the street has been a real uh, tough one here in Ann Arbor. Uh, we continue not only to make progress uh, in reviewing the plan and implementing the recommendations, but we monitor the extent of the system, the condition of the system, and its use. Uh, we're seeing the increased use just under safety. Um, increased use, the same or decreasing number of crashes between vehicles and bicycles and pedestrians, to me that's a good story. That means more people are using the system and they're using it safely. Challenges, uh, it's kind of like me trying to fit within 10 minutes, overly ambitious. Uh, I'm getting there. Uh, the, uh, the idea was that the plan, although it was a transition from biking to non-motorized, there was still an emphasis on bikes. We're trying to balance that out. I mentioned the sidewalk gaps. We've only handled a handful. We're still uh, in the process of making recommendations for enhanced funding sources, wayfinding, and best practices. There were certain areas in the plan where uh, the engineering wouldn't support the plan recommendations, so we're taking uh, another view of some of these critical areas. And what you'll see if you look at the plan review online uh, is what staff's recommending now to substitute for what was in the 07 document to assure the system continu uh, continuity or integrity, but using different techniques than what were in the 07 plan. Uh, Eric already talked about the bike sharing, bike boulevards, is uh, use of a, a lower volume street next to a high volume arterial as a strategy in order to make bicycle connectedness, uh, continuing to deploy signs, lines, and symbols, uh, and the pedestrian facilities, the flashing beacons and hawk. Uh, these are all, again, just a quick highlight of the type of recommendations that are uh, in the plan. Many of these concepts were not around in 05, 06. Bike boulevards, bike stations, flashing beacons. It's all a new vocabulary, and you're among those on the ground floor hearing me talk about it, and you know what they are when you see them out there in the street. <coughs> This is a list of what are the various elements of the plan review. So there's technical reports. Uh, there's a non-motorized transportation plan review website on the city's webpage, just in a search box, type non-motorized transportation plan. And you'll see a series of maps and reports. And again, they're all uh, looking for your feedback. Is there something that we ought to be talking about that we're not? With that, uh, about a minute and a half over, which, you know, when you walk or bicycle somewhere, sometimes it takes a little longer to get there than you expect. Appreciate your uh, time and attention, and I'll turn it back to the mayor.